And so they did like the magic carpet thing, and then they did like their songs on the balcony and stuff. I love awesome. them. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, David, can you hear us okay? Yeah, loud and clear. All right. Good to see you. We can hear and see you, too. This, Good morning. This, this is Nicholas and Lucas. Hi, Nicholas. Hey. Hi, David. Hi, hi. <laughs> so we're a minute early. Let's see who I who else will join. I think there's at least a couple of other people who will, who will come on. And we're recording this. Uh, um, especially the part where we're going to present things so we can we can share it with other people on our Facebook page and uh, maybe there's something that will help some other people. We'll see. So, and I we didn't talk in advance, but I, there were like two or three questions that really I wanted to ask the Europeans yeah. uh, based on our conversations from yesterday. Cool. cool. Uh, one was... Um, you can see what you think. One was like what they're using for their biomass trees. Mm. And if they have mm. a problem with willow or poplar, like they're worried about it taking over. Right. And, um, and then the other question was what they're using for their um, row spacing. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. It seems like there was another. And then the other was the, the, um, the timing for their uh, growth heavy um, pruning, you know. Okay. I wonder if anyone is also using Connor. Okay, Rodrigo, it's one. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, so, um, so everyone, this call, I, I don't have an account with Google or Zoom or anything like that. So this call, I guess we get one hour um, to talk. But I think we can we can always hang up and just restart another one, too. Just so you know, if it hangs Stop. up at one hour, I'll just start a new session, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, and well, how about we wait a few more minutes and see if anybody else is... Uh, I think Rob is going to join somebody from Michigan that I know. Osipa, do you know if uh, Stephen is planning to, to to be on the call? No, he won't be able to make it because he has his daughter, so like weekends are not um, so good. Okay. But um, I have like contact to him all the time, so if we have some stuff for him... I can always be like the go between, and he's he's always very busy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And um, so I feel like if we have something specific or whatever comes up here where we're wondering, I can just um, discuss it with him and then and then get back to you guys. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, we had a couple of good questions that came up um, after our discussions yesterday that we're yeah. curious what other people are doing and. And all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so bummed I can't be there. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. <laughs> You're back in Europe now, right? Yeah, I'm back and it's like jet lag and <laughs> Right, right. Um, cool. Oh yeah, we have Jennifer joining. Yeah. Hey Jennifer. Welcome to the meeting. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Uh, sorry, we're driving, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're not driving yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that is okay no all righty so this is the crew who couldn't make it to washington oh no roger's here too yeah so we're we're in washington nice and then everybody else i think is is not hey brian uh i think you're muted Hey, is that better? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? You're loud. How's it going, there. everyone? We're good. <laughs> Je Jennifer, you need the green screen. Have you ever seen that guy who pretends to be on like uh, office video calls, 
and he has like a, a portable green screen so he's actually sitting at like a stadium watching <laughs> he's got like a beer and he's watching a baseball game he's on like this uh <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to hide anything you guys can see exactly where i'm at he, he has this like fake office background but you can kind of notice something's up because you hear like crowd cheering and <laughs> Um, we're sure that uh, we should do introductions. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Well, so we'll yeah, try to so wait. We're just I, coming. I, let me message. I have one other person specifically that I think will come. So maybe meanwhile, hi everyone. My name is Lucas. I was just curious to know where is where are you guys located? If we can go briefly, real quick, just say where you are. <laughs> David, do you want to start here, like in the top uh, left corner? Sure. Good morning, everybody. I'm David, and uh, I am in uh, Victoria, British Columbia. <laughs> you're, tw you're 20 miles away. Only 20 miles away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we can record a little bit. So I'm Rodrigo Suarez. Um, I am based in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, but I'm originally from Brazil. I was born in Rio. So um, I think there is probably, I'm sure there's a Brazilian that will be coming to this call. <laughs> So at some point, oh, <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, Jennifer, I connect with her because, uh, Jennifer, you are in the Azores, and I was there a week ago, so that was cool to see that we almost missed, we missed each other for a day, so, <laughs> but what an amazing place, so, I'll popcorn to Ursula. Hey, hey, Uzi, oh, we have a couple of people coming, really? Good yeah. Morning. It's morning over there, right? Yes. Wonderful. Is that light going to be a problem for people? Oh, there we go. Yeah. First of all, if you just mentioned where you're where you're based and uh, you're just doing popcorn style, just introducing yourself. Yeah. I'm uh, from um, yeah, it'll be great if people can mute if yeah, they're not, not yeah, because there's a lot of mute background noise. Uh, I think I can mute yours if you want me to. Uh, I cannot. Uh, oh, she muted herself. Wow. Yeah. So, quiet in the room. Uh, yeah, now it's better. <laughs> we, can, we can hear now. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm located in Switzerland. I'm originally from Switzerland. Um, I have spent two years in Brazil as a part of Agenda Gutsch. And then uh, we did a European tour and um, started to work with universities in Europe. And um, basically, I helped them, a lot of the, the new pioneers in Europe to connect, to come together and start projects. And um, our largest project is the uh, Lighthouse Project in Milano, in the south of Italy, where we won a prize as one of the most uh, innovative agricultural projects of Europe. And it's a beautiful centropic farming system, which was super resilient to the 45 degrees of summer heat last year without irrigation. I'm very curious and very happy to be here and curious to get to know you all. And I see your Zippo is here. Is that your Zippo? Yes. Yes. Hello, Ursula. We never, we never met, actually. No, but we've talked a lot. Or, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Josipa, and um, I'm originally from Bosnia. My immediate family lives in Virginia, US, but I live in Denmark because I met a Danish person, so I'm... Um, living in Denmark, in Copenhagen. And um, I met Ernst in 2016 at a Spanish course. And two years ago, I wanted to start implementing 
all the stuff because it makes so much sense. So I don't have land because I live in the city, but I have a small piece of land um, that I started a system together with Steven Werner um, in 21. So I can tell a bit about that. And um, yeah, Ursula has helped me because um, I just had a baby, so I can't go anywhere right now, but she's helped two people that work with me, like get internships in Brazil. So we're just kind of sucking all the information from everywhere and hope to kind of um, also increase the area where we're working. So hi. <laughs> Uh, maybe Jennifer, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, I'm Jennifer. Um, I'm originally from Ohio, but I moved out to the Azores, which are the Portuguese islands, uh, three years ago. And I have a piece of land there. I started planting. Yeah, I've been working on it for about a year and a half. So I just did my first like, bigger plantation in February. But I also spent time on the mainland of Portugal here in Lisbon. Um, and yeah, we're just working with Anna Teresa, who also works in Agriculture Street. Um, she has a project out in Angola. <laughs> but we just are coming back from an Agriculture Street meeting that was happening in the north of Portugal. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm connecting here in the Azores, and then I also spent three months in Angola earlier this year with UG Now, Agriculture South. So, do you guys mind if we turn the table a little bit this way? Yeah, I feel like fine. it's. Uh, sure. You want to grab? We're gonna turn the table. <laughs> this way. Yeah. They kind of into the sun though, right? Maybe. I think it'll be on a. Okay, yeah, is the uh, sound ever good? Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, my name is Brian Beachy. Uh, I'm currently in Iowa, which is in the uh, Midwest United States. Um, I have lived in Haiti for the past nine years, uh, working in community development in, in Haiti, which is where I met Roger and how I learned about tropical agriculture. And I've done quite a bit of uh, work working with it in tropical climates, but not much at all in temperate climates. I grew up in Ohio. My uncle was an orchard farmer in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer, OH, right? And uh, my uncle was an orchard farmer there. So I grew up on uh, like a traditional orchard farm. And uh, when I moved to Haiti and started working in agriculture and trees and stuff, uh, that was kind of what I had in my mind. And I went through a lot of hard knocks and learning and uh, yeah, very much uh, traditioned or evolved into a more centropical approach now. And so now that I'm back in the tropic, uh, uh, sorry, not tropic, temperate climate, I need to try and learn how to do it here again. So it's, um, I currently have like two acres of chestnuts that I planted in 2018 and I'm wanting to somehow kind of convert it over to centropic system uh, from right now. It's just a total monoculture 20 by 20 planting of chestnuts. So yeah. Um, oh, so, um, I'm Roger. I think I know almost the people, everybody here, and I think everybody knows that I first developed an interest in centropic farming um, because of the work I was doing in Haiti. And it was like 2016, the Life and Centropy video came out, and the before and after pictures from Ernst's farm, like it just... Um, it, it, I thought this could be Haiti, you know, the mountains in Haiti are very deforested, they have lots of soil erosion, and to be able to um, uh, do what he had done on, on, on a, on a, in the, uh, could, um, here, is that you, Brian? Uh, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, 
Yeah, so it, I had no idea the, the journey I was on. I thought I would just be like getting some documents translated and there was a training program that could be easily uh, copy and pasted in Haiti. And it turned out to be a little bit more involved than that. Um, and uh, the program's going good. And now um, I, I kind of had the intuition to start um, using the method back in Michigan. And so that's how Nicholas and I started communicating because we have some similarities in our, in our climate. And um, we're both trying to give temperate syntropic uh, agroforestry a boost in the US. And we're hoping that uh, this can help start that. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm Nicholas. Um, I'm at home right now. <laughs> and uh, so um, I'm also actually I'm from Iowa originally, born in Iowa. Um, so <laughs> uh, and also have a little bit more like, I guess I've been working with um, organic berries and other kinds of farms since like 2004 with a gap in between for a few years because I was a registered nurse. Um, but I've been here for, this is my 10th season on this. This was a conventional apple orchard of 700 trees on trellis with um, dwarfing rootstocks that needed irrigation, needed trellis. Um, so it's like the opposite of the syntropic approach. <laughs> um, and also learning the transition, like le or learning the change in mindset. Um, but yeah, some, some friends and I, they were here yesterday. I don't think neither of them can join, um, today on the, on the video call. Uh, we'd been studying soils cause, um, one of them is a vegetable farmer and, um, yeah, the other buddy just has an interest in agriculture. Um, it kind of led us down this long road of this, like we had this soil club and looked at it from all these different sides, like studying Elaine Ingham and John Kempf and, um, uh, yeah, trying to make better compost, trying to think about like inputs and where fertility actually comes from and led us to uh, Centropic Agroforestry just a couple years ago. So um, I'd already been planting um, <clears throat> basically like successional agroforestry, like trials, like a trial along my back of my property uh, six years ago. And so when I found, um, found Centropic Agroforestry, it was like, exactly what I was looking for and just yeah super excited to be doing doing more trials so I've done I've got some trials that are like four years old three um one's on their second year and then one's I'm planting um one's on their first year also and then one's I'm planting this coming year hi I'm Lucas um, I'm actually Brazilian. I'm from south of Brazil, Curitiba, and I don't have a lot of experience with farming. Actually, I have no experience my whole life, but I had the opportunity to meet Ernest. Uh, me and my wife went and spent three months at Ernest's farm, I think it was a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and that's where I also met Roger. And that's how I'm connected with you all. Um, currently, we're living in South Oregon, but we are just in next weekend. We're going to move to San Diego, California, because, you know, I'm Brazilian. My wife is Filipino and we try temperate claim climate. So <laughs> it's hard. So <laughs> you're going to go south to get some like a little bit of warm. But uh, I think just uh, it's been uh, really a rich experience to be here and and um, discussing the ideas and hearing from these guys who are living and applying temperate climates that is also possible you know is also possible in temperate climates it might take a little longer <laughs> sometimes things grow slow slower but um, it's also a sometimes it's a plus if you you know <laughs> have a to manage a few other things in your life, plus a syntropy forest. Mm -hmm. Good to have time. Anyways, okay. good to meet you all. So we had uh, a couple presentations uh, prepared. Josipa, do you want to start first? Are you, Josipa? 
Sure. Um, let's see how I share my own screen, actually. Um, Did you manage to do the pictures? The pictures, I, I could not uh, download the pictures. Okay. We kind of have, I'm, I'm really impressed we have um, good enough connection to do a Zoom call because it just wasn't connecting. Okay. Uh, I, yeah then so. i'll try i'll try from here like maybe if you pull up the presentation i can do that first and then i'll show oh. the pictures okay. we'll see we can see if i can do it from from here uh does it present present now you think that's the let's see what happens if i yeah okay Uh, I think I'm figuring this out here. No, we can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Well, we don't really need to see you. Uh, um, no. You just tell me when you want to forward a slide. To me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, you can just, this is my name, Josipa Pichanich, and I'm not very good at technology or sharing, but I have this Instagram account where I kind of put stuff up. So if you're interested, I, I find Instagram for me the easiest way to kind of follow the people I like. And then you kind of see, that's how I see when courses are coming up and stuff like that. Uh, but you can go to the next slide. Okay. So just before I start to tell about my system, like for me, maybe to just share my kind of um, philosophy or the essence of, so one time I asked Anne last year, the course um, at Mark Leiber's farm, like, how do I know when to do this? I think prune a tree or something. And he his answer was, you have to ask the tree. And um, for me, that's like kind of the what resonates about Anne because it's like this, way he is is he's really integrated into the ecosystem so for me like the the way i think when you understand it's really how you see nature and how you see yourself and so for me i've kind of come to because i've also studied a lot like all those people elaine ningham and and um, i love what's her name christine jones and john kemp's podcast all those things and then I think um, you get all this information and I think it's observation and experimentation are the main tools that I use. Because at first when I really started, I, I really got to understand things. And then this other thing that people always ask me is like, how do you scale it? How can more people do this? For me, it's, I think it's not really just scaling or copying, it's really multiplying, it's getting as many people as possible to like have a desire to do this. And I don't know how you make that happen, but I think that's kind of where I, I feel this whole thing, how do you scale and how can it be big is always the question. For me, it's more like multiplication instead of um, scaling. Mm -hmm. So just to give a framework kind of where, where I am with my beliefs in this whole um, uh, practice of, of Syntropic. So you can go to the next one. Um, <clears throat> so I have a very small plot. It's just because uh, I don't, I, I really wish I had land, but I, I, I live in the city, as I said, and there's a public farm about 20 minutes driving from me. And the director there just gave me this piece of land. It's about a thousand square meters, which is very small. It's like a tenth of a hectare. I don't know. I'm not good with acres, and but it was just a degraded pasture with sandy loam soils and a normal pH when it was tested. And there where we are in Copenhagen is about 600 millimeter rain per year. Um, and the, the growing zone is 7B. And what I have there is two systems. One is just seven rows that are 12 meter long and that was planted in October 21. So now I'm on the second season. And then last year in October, I planted four rows that are 18 meters long. And that was together um, with a consultancy with Ernst. So it wasn't a course, it was Ernst. And then I had about three people that were 
with me helping plant. Uh, so you can go to the next slide. <clears throat> so um, I worked with, I, I met Stephen Werner. I don't know if some of you, I know Ursula, you know Stephen. But um, I, I met him in 2016 at the course in Spain. And so I basically asked him to help me. And um, I just wanted, what I wanted to have is just to try it out. And I wanted to have lots of all the kind of, what you say, traditional fruit and nut trees and berry bushes in Denmark. Um, so that's kind of um, what, what we went after. And this is kind of des the design with um, tree rows and berry rows. And there's um, um, seven meters between the tree rows. And in between each of these tree rows is a berry row of raspberries or blackberries. We can get into the system later when we when we take a look at it. So you can go to the next slide, and I can also share this so people can see it later. Um, <clears throat> so um, I just want to kind of um, summarize the experiences of these two seasons when I've done. So this thing of does it work in the temperate? It really works, <laughs> and. Um, and what I did is between these rows, you just saw the seven meter tree rows and the berry rows that are three and a half meters. I really wanted to grow veggies. So I put vegetable rows in between where I kind of grew like four or five different vegetables. And I actually didn't like that. I felt I pushed the system too much because then I didn't have enough biomass. Um, so I think in my experience, it's more fun to really build it properly. So you really just go do the management of cutting the grass, putting it on the rows instead of having um, these veggie rows that then were kind of yeah, taking away from, from the grass. And um, I, I ended up kind of uh, planting other trees in it. And um, the, the three and a half meters between rows in my experience works really well. And um, like I said, every alternate row is a berry row that has nursing trees in it. I, I have to just finish the video. I need to say one thing. Oh, baby, I have to talk. I not say one. Okay. It's because I'm my sorry. backpack is filled with uh, <laughs> other backpack and um, what well, is three cars and some of three backpacks. Okay, I'll talk to you. I'm sorry. So um, the, my experience in having the rows, because I get a lot of questions about um, that, oh, it should be spaced more because there's less light in our climate. But actually spacing it closer makes a difference in terms of um, the grass. So the grass I had was couch grass and very degraded. And just in two seasons, the grass really like picked up and is completely changed character. And I, I cut it three times this season, like in May and June and July. Um, so in, in my learning, like it's actually because um, if there, I don't think this, the same thing happens because around me, the grass is not growing and doesn't have the same character as this. Um, yeah, Jennifer, do you have a question? Yeah, really quick about the grass. Did you change varieties and like try and re-sow the grass, or that's just the couch grass that you're referring to that just improves? No, it's just not couch grass anymore. It's some kind of other. So it's completely the couch grass has been like replaced by these bushy. I don't know the English. Um, I I will try to look it up. I think it's that grass. So it's actually just. Uh, change character like it's changed the species that comes that dominates and I didn't and do any naturally. yeah I didn't do anything so so yeah <clears throat> so if you go to the next slide Roger um yeah so just like the thing for me like I've just come to realize I just want to check against the principles and against what you observe in nature when I started the system, I, I, I was in forestry before I um, started doing this. So in Denmark, there is a um, very used biomass tree, a poplar that's a, actually, an, I think, American um, variety. It's called OP42. 
and it's used because it doesn't do shoots. And so I was like, oh, uh, should I use that one? Because what if the shoots come and stuff like that? And um, now I understand I should have just used the poplar that's like on site, that's more common, uh, because the, the shoots will come when you have space. And um, actually this like OP42 is struggling a bit um, in my system. So like that's like where I feel like, oh, I should just actually remember the principle and do it. And then this picture is kind of really hard to see. I find it very hard to photograph um, green stuff and plants. <laughs> but this is just in the city. It's a big beach hedge. It's like two meters high. And on top, um, I can't do the cursor now, can I? There is like a, a elder coming from it. It's an elder like growing yeah, right. in it. So somehow an elder seed, probably from a bird, has like grown through this two meter beach. So this can happen. So in shade, it still found its way up. <laughs> so these are the kind of things I always just look at, observe, and then try to say, ah, maybe I can do it. Um, so I feel like maybe we could even put some elder cuttings um, uh, later when the system is like advanced. If you're missing some biomass, it could be done. Um, and if you do the next slide. Um, so just some things I've learned. Um, in April of this year, um, I was heavily pregnant. So I went to like kind of do what I could. And um, we put, I had hay from a farm, not hay, straw. <clears throat> straw from a farmer that I put on the roast. So I had enough biomass. And w the wind and the animals like moved it all around because it's very light. And it actually covered some of my grass rows and kind of killed the grass. So what came up is um, dandelions. There's just huge dandelions there. So that's kind of a learning. Like this didn't work well because I think it, maybe if it had rained and had matted it down, it would work. Mm -hmm. um, and then this thing about biomass in our climate, I th even when ants came, like we put so much biomass, like 80 centimeters, it just all goes, it gets like digested. So I don't feel we should worry about like putting too much. I feel like it can't be too much. It will all get digested. And the big problem I have is that I have slugs because when you put all this biomass, this it's so like um, moist that they just come so I don't know how we can grow vegetables if we apply these principles. I think that maybe because vegetables are the placenta species of abundancy systems and we plant them in, for example, mine was an accumulation system. So maybe if the soil is much better, um, then the vegetables will be like in better shape to withstand the slugs. And another thing Anne said to me is that um, sl like slugs have missed their predator, which is the um, the one with the pokies, porcupine. Mm -hmm. um, um, so that's kind of the challenge. Um, then um, I had tree logs. Um, I put tree logs to mark like the beds. Um, and that didn't didn't work well for me because when I go with the brush cutter to cut the grass, you hit them. And also the slugs, it's a perfect like slug, um, what's it called, slug home, yeah. So so that, I, I actually removed them this season in the spring. Um, and then we had a huge drought in two months. There was no rain and I, I couldn't go. It was right when I birthed my baby. So it was like nothing was done and it was a drought and everything was just green and thriving. So that was quite... Uh, impressive to me because the soil if you looked at the soil it was really dry but the plants like they were just green and standing up <clears throat> um, then the fruit like all the fruit trees I have they're quite fine but they're not really like thriving and I'm guessing that the system like the soil is still not good enough and also the quality of the trees um, I tried to get the best trees but I think that they just um, all these like trees we use the like res um, disease resistant and stuff they just struggle and um, I have some plum seeds that I put in 21 and the plums are just as high as the trees 
So I actually do, I'm most exciting about trying to do things from seed and then graft. Um, and then the other experience, like I was studying so much and thinking and how to do it. I would just say, just start, just do it and start with a small system and you will learn so much more than like trying to really prepare. And it's like, you can't have too much, like put more, it's easier to take out than to like scramble to fill, to fill the holes. <laughs> um, and next slide, I hope I'm done soon, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the questions like I have, and maybe we'll have some other question sections, like I've never grafted um, so many trees and not in situ, like in the system. And then the, I guess next season will be my first season to do the big pulsing prune. Um, so when to do it, um, at the course at Marks last year, Anne said to prune um, six to eight weeks before the hottest season, before the hottest time of the year. And then the other thing is like when we pruned at Marks, the trees already had leaves. So this makes sense to me. I think you have to prune, do the big pulse when there's some green on it, because this green on the branches will like, Go down on the soil and, and give a nourishment but I'm lo I love to hear from other people and what they do and then like this rhubarb I have is just going crazy it's so huge I use it for food and I sold some and I just use it as biomass because it's just always going on my trees so I'm, I'm just wondering what the life cycle of rhubarb is because they can like live 10 years um, and then how to manage raspberries and blackberries um, in terms of maybe potentially using them as biomass because they grow so vigorously. Um, so that would be like an interesting thing. Could it be done so that you use um, them both for food and for biomass? And then like th my system is so small to prepare all the plantings is a huge like endeavor. So if you were to do like half a hectare or a hectare, like, is quite a, a big thing, but I think once you plant it, then things can go. It's just the preparation and stuff. And so maybe these are some questions. I don't know how we'll do question sessions or whatever. And then the next um, slide, I think, should be. Yeah, like we talked about when I talked to Roger, we said there was three topics like networking, then sharing of experience, and economics. So for me, the idea is maybe we could have. A structured like practical question and ans answer with ants if we like um, wanted to do that and came up with some questions and then he could come and kind of answer um, for us and um, then I think it would be so exciting like what Nicholas organized these practitioner gatherings and each other's farms like we help each other plant but then we exchange and learn but of course how to <laughs> finance this that would be the, the question and then i think these zoom um sharing for me would be really great and i think focusing on the practical experience for me is the most um exciting and relevant because there's lots of these things where Ants gets invited he talks and it's always general and stuff so really having people that are practitioners and sharing uh, would be really cool and just the last one yeah. so uh, economics that's Roger maybe you will talk about this but for me um, I would love to also kind of hear from others because being a farmer is really tough work and for me I live in the city, I have two small kids. I can't really, I, I don't really know how um, I could do it. So for me, um, I've developed a five-year project that's called the Nordic Learning Hub at this farm where I'm at. And we're currently like, have to just see if we can have this land and then we have a potential partner to do this kind of learning hub. So that's kind of my hope that I could have a project to develop a five hectare system over several years, not all at once. Uh, but then also like this kind of off-grid simple place with lots of land is also my dream. Um, and actually Roger just sent this link, so that's also exciting. So I'd love to hear other people's kind of situations or ideas or how, how to um, be able to pay your bills 
while being able to do this. <laughs> so, so that was my presentation. I have like pictures. Um, so I don't know if you guys are interested to kind of run through the pictures where I can show some, or do you want to ask questions or go on? Or I can share the pictures later. Um, I, I think now is a good time for the pictures yeah. if people have time. Now that means I have to figure out how to um, how to make it so you can share. Yeah, I think I also have this. Let me just see. Let me just access them because could I, am I also able to um, share my screen? Let me just pull up, make sure I can pull up these pictures. I'm, I you know, in, in Zoom, there's a way to do it. Um, and I thought I was getting around the one hour limit by using Google Meet, which didn't work. Um, I don't see a button where I can click to say you can share. Yeah, I have this. I, I have the button that says present now. So let oh, me try it. There you go. Yeah, it looks like an arrow. Um, yeah. Oh, look at this. Can you see something? It's loading. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, do you know how I if I could make it bigger somehow? Maybe you have like a full screen. There you go. No, this is not. I don't know. It seems like that's as big as it gets. It looks good. It looks good. Is it yeah, all right? I've a, okay. I've got a screen size here at our end. Okay. So this is the this is the field. So again, it's very hard. But this is just when I cut the grass and made them into rows. So there's nothing there. And then we made the the lines. And um, we we rotovated the grass away and kind of weeded and then did a broad fork and then a bit of horse manure and then planted and then covered. I had you have you see this big pile of wood chip. Can you see when I do my cursor? Yeah. So I just I knew I just know a guy from landscaping. So he he delivered these wood chips um, to me. Um, so yeah, you can see there's almost very little um, these rows and we had planted the trees. I mean, it just sticks in October. There's nothing. Um, and here it is. Um, you can see on the top, there's almost nothing growing. Um, and then, yeah, I just like want to say like a lot, like for a long time, October to March 22, is like really nothing happened. I was like, is anything going to happen? Is anything going to come up? This garlic I planted um, as the placenta is the main one, um, which is coming up here. You can see it. And then these are kind of the these veggie rows I made with the hay. And I put um, potatoes in this one. Other ones had other um, potatoes and beans here. Um, here's the garlic. And I planted strawberries in the in the spring. Uh, and garlic coming up even more. And these here are the veggie rows that I really didn't like that I had. Um, and here already in September, you can see a bit more green, uh, the different trees. Um, strawberries and rhubarb is like dominant here. And then you have a poplar here. So the biomass or the nursing trees I had is willow, poplar and elder. And then fruit trees, I have like apple, pear, all the fruit trees you can grow here, um, cherries, uh, quince, plum. And um, so here you see the, I have some, um, what's it called, leeks and strawberries. And uh, these are the malva species, the malva species. I don't remember what they're called. They work really well. I think they've, uh, they're green like all the time, almost. <laughs> here, the slugs, they just eat all the veggies. Um, and here's from like also a shot. So here is the system now. And then up here were the rows that we planted with Ernst when he came. Um, uh, and here you can see the how, how much green it is. Um, this was in July this year. No, this, I think this is July last year. 
And here again, the garlic. There's a lot of the same. Then I harvested the garlic. These are the rows I prepared for ants visit. And here we are with ants. And um, so here's an example of how we planted a quince tree. And um, so we have the, um, the hay and then there's um, some pumpkin that there's market gardeners next to me that had this whole huge field of zucchinis and pumpkins. And we took all that biomass and we put it on the rows and then here's it on around the quince tree that we planted. And it's just huge amounts of, of biomass around. So if you plant a solitary tree, that's what you kind of can do, like really put a lot of biomass so that it can um, get digested and get stuff started. But then this quince tree got eaten I have voles, mm -hmm. um, so they're around, and but they're very selectively. They've eaten three trees so far, so that's also like a, a question: like, why do they eat? Is it a weak tree? Like this, this nursery has really bad trees, so I, I also feel that they don't just randomly eat all the roots. Um, and here's the system we planted with ants: lots of um, tree seeds in the middle, and then we planted garlic and potatoes. Uh, and strawberries um, and this is how ants does like the tree seed mix so you have the tree seeds and you mix it with a bit of compost um, and then you kind of just spread it in the middle and here you can see the huge like mountains of this zucchini biomass that we use and um, so that's for me also another thing how ants just see something and then it's not it's really these principles that you apply. So we had all this biomass from the field next door. They were just going to uh, not use it. So we used it. And what happened is that this, I think that this biomass of the zucchini and pumpkin plants gave a lot of um, nutrition to the potatoes. Because the potatoes I planted the first season with only um, horse manure and hay, they were struggling, like very really yellow and not strong plants. And these were... Um, the only other treatment they got is these zucchini plants. So I feel like they must have given some nutrition to them. And they went like down really fast. They got digested. Um, so I don't know if you can see how high the biomass is that we planted. And by next spring, it's all like um, much, much less. So it's really like biomass, biomass, biomass. Um, and here's ants cutting grass. He's just work. We use some grass from around the field, and he would just get up. We would be there at seven, and he'd just be cutting grass in the morning. <laughs> He's just unstoppable with his. I couldn't keep up with him, so it's a bit embarrassing. Um, oh, this is a tree seed mix again, and this is just uh, like strawberries, potatoes, garlic, and then tree seeds and a few a, a few trees in the middle. Um, so that's what I really am interested in to, to do a system, not with trees, but just with seeds. Um, and one row I had hazelnuts and a cherry tree that we planted here. Um, yes, that's the same. Oh, this is, oh, this just, I'm sorry, this kind of jumps. Oh, uh, no, this is, oh, sorry, this is the, the first system with Steven that you saw. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the spring of this year of 23. Um, so everything is quite dormant, nothing is happening, Just and this is where we put the hay and a lot of new cuttings, trying to kind of um, prepare the system for when I wouldn't come for a while, and it snowed in at the end of March, and um, then this is in July, looking down, this is Anne's system here in the front, and then the more green here is the, the older system that I planted with Stephen. And you can see it's just completely, it's so hard to see, but just everything is just exploded and growing, despite the fact that there was a drought and I wasn't there to to do much. Um, so lots of these are the support species, the willows. Um, you can see here an elder. I have some alder, Alnus glutinosa also. Um, and then harvested garlic again. From This is from Ant's system. And um, yeah, there's some pictures just, I don't know, you can see how bare it was. And then here it's just really exploding and growing amazingly. Um, 
and I can share the species. I don't have it all now, but the, this comfrey here that grows next door to me, I just put lots of roots in there in the veggie rows that I didn't want. So I replaced it with some willow cuttings and comfrey in some areas. It's so hard to, oh, this is an old picture. Uh, I think now this, sorry. So this is from the season before. This is the garlic in the first season. I'm sorry, it's jumping, but that's, so just to, to show how how big a change it is from from nothing, and this is just two seasons where it's really um, taken off. All right. So then I'll unshare or I'll stop. Um, did I stop sharing or you still see this? It's still... Uh, stop. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. there you go. All right. So thank you for listening. <laughs> I, I think Uzi had a question. It's in the chat yeah. about the... Oh, sorry. Um, you want to read it or should I? Yeah, no. It? Uh, yeah, it's it's tough. You mean like what type it is? It's this... Yes. Um, yeah, it's like this... Um, let me look up the name. But yeah, it's like this. And it wasn't like that when I started. When I started, it was the rhizome grass. Okay. The couch grass. And somehow okay. the system changed into these. Let me just look up the the Danish. The Danish word, yeah. I just have to translate it too. Because That's these tufted grasses in temperate zone are the home of ground beetles. And ground beetles are the most ferocious slug eaters in okay. systems. Okay. So if you cut them and remove them completely and use them as biomass, you increase the slugs. Okay. And you decrease the ground beetles. Okay. So I know we all need biomass and I understand that you cut it or that Ernst cut it all. But yeah. in this in this consideration, it might be great to understand or to, to experiment <clears throat> what would happen if you would let some of them <clears throat> there. Mm. There is also this technique of um, integrating so-called uh, beetle banks into the system, mm -hmm. which is basically uh, a small hump which is only planted with tufted grasses. Mm -hmm. And due to the fact that it's higher, it gets a little drier, which is suitable for the ground beetles. Mm -hmm. And they basically they walk out every night more than 50 meters into the system and go slug hunting. Okay. And ground on beetles, the, do they eat like the small slugs? Or are they, they eat big? everything. They are quite, mm -hmm. some of them are quite big, some are smaller. Mm -hmm. They eat the eggs, they eat the, the young snails, and they okay. eat the big ones. Okay, okay. Wow. Just considering Wait. that this might be something, because I have an entomology background, so I mm -hmm. was studying insect behavior in syntropic systems when I was mm -hmm. in Brazil. Okay. And it's very amazing how these systems change um, groups and types of insects over yeah, time, yeah, yeah. and they're perfect indicators of system health or system... Yeah, yeah. When the system yeah, is not well designed, the same goes for the moles mm -hmm. in terms of the trees, um, mice, everything. They're very great indicators of where things are not in balance or mm -hmm. not in balance yet. Yeah. That might be that is too old in comparison to the life cycles of the other species. Mm -hmm. That might be the quality of a tree from, from the nursery, because that's one of the big issues yeah. here. Trees are very expensive. And not and good quality. Europe, a, a good um, walnut is easily 75 euros. Yeah, yeah. And uh, losing them in the system is is it's really a loss. Yeah. I, my, and, my walnut that was very expensive, it, it died, but the, uh, it's coming from the root. So oh, nice. it's very vigorous. So I hope, you know, I will let it be. But yeah. It's really crazy to buy these trees and then they're, they are not very good quality and they're, yeah. Definitely, expensive. definitely. And the younger you get them, the better. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did in the with Steven. I, I just had one year and then the second system with ants, it was too early, so I couldn't get, yeah. um, I, I, I miss, like had a miscommunication. So I got these trees that basically are the bare root trees that didn't get sold. Yeah. And the guy just puts them in a pot, and so they just get these windy roots. Yeah. And it's terrible. Yeah. 
So yeah, for everyone, the younger the seeds, the, like if you can find one year old trees is much better than getting, you think ah, I will speed up everything with a three, four year old tree, but no, these are the most struggling trees. We tried in, in Germany, in one of the largest syntropic systems in Europe, um, we completely ditched the trees. Yeah, yeah. In That's terms of like real trees, we went into seed systems yes. and support the, the most successful systems that we have. Yeah. They grow incredibly fast. We have cuttings in there. We have a few plants that we plant, but very few. And most of it is all done by seeds. Yeah. And they show a much more vigorous growth than um, really planting trees yeah, yeah. Um, the, way, the way it's done in the tropics. And this is also my intuition and what I see of the seeds that have come up, they're much faster. Because <laughs> they're more resilient. They're yeah, way exactly. more resilient. Yeah, you know? yeah. So the the compromise, if I understand correctly, when planting by seed is you you're going to get a full size fruit tree. You know, the in Michigan the popular uh, apple it's a semi dwarf um, because it's easier to manage and they can get more fruit per, but if I understand correctly, that characteristic comes with the root stock. So yeah. if you plant by seed, then you'll, you'll, you can graft a different apple, um, but you, you're gonna get a full-sized um, canopy. Yeah, and this is the thing like um, at, the, at, um, at the course um, last year, like Anne said, the two things, it's the life cycle and the stra like the the light requirement mm -hmm. that's genetically encoded in a tree and these are the things that i think we should honor but that's very difficult if you want to produce cherries like if you have it on prunus avium they get huge mm -hmm. so this is the thing how to, do you uh, manage but i'm very much interested in really growing after the print like how the tree should be so i really have Everything that I bought was on the wild rootstock, on the original rootstock, okay. which will mean the trees get a lot higher, or they are in the strata. Yeah, they I should be. Much more Don't touch this. Resistant, though, too. Yeah. So in a in uh, this might be a good time to end this call and start a new mm -hmm. one because i I'm, yeah. always, <laughs> I'm on the one hour mark now and i don't have a yeah a professional account so so I'm, that would work well can could we do like a 10 minute break so i can manage my yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. great or i'll can... just i'll just log on in about 10 minutes again we'll, so you'll send a link I'll roger send a new link and we'll start great. uh in five to ten minutes something like that give you a mm -hmm. chance to care for the kids thank you so much and thanks okay. for listening I look okay. forward to hearing you other talk also. <laughs> All right. Um, it'll record. You're still recording, right? Uh, that's a good point. Let's stop recording. OK. Uh, I'll do two separate. Um, Is that the lady slipper? Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, we have yellow and pink. Pink is the 